So symbol relations, which we call clocks, but really is the relationship between different symbols that you're seeing at once. They help create improvements in processing concepts, understanding and grasping what we read and hear, gaining insight, helps with logical reasoning, seeing connections between different ideas, analyzing abstract concepts, understanding cause and effect, helps with our flexibility of thought and seeing different opinions, helps us accept and process other viewpoints from other people rather than just knowing, thinking that we're right all the time, um, making rational decisions, thinking critically, and of course helps with our memory because we're taking in more clues and helps with our attention because we're able to focus and stay in our frontal lobes for longer because there's less noise that's helping uh, keep us less distracted. So how can this tool help? From around the age of kindergarten, for some parents that are proactive, they do you they do get their kids to read clocks at an earlier age, and that's great. But for most people, I would say 98% of the population, um, you see this clock on the wall in kindergarten. And you, you realize that there's a few things that you're looking for. When's recess? When's lunch? When's recess? When can I go home? And from there, everything fills in. Oh, when's my second period? Oh, I do this at this time. Oh, gym class is at at one o'clock, oh, I like that. I can watch for the clock for there, right? So we're using this tool and we're decoding this pattern to be able to understand what time it is. It's just a circle with lines and numbers. Our brain is decoding that whole clue to be able to tell us what time it is. We're putting meaning to that because different things happen at certain times of the day. So we're very conditioned to know that this means time, but really it's just a tool to be able to give us information. So it's important to understand not only what the correct time is, but how do we know what the correct time is? So if we're looking at a clock like this, a lot of people would say, if they're making a mistake and reading this wrong, oh, it's two o'clock. Oh, you want an exact time? Oh, it's, it's 2.56, right? But really there's two symbols here that are, are telling different stories, right? So if I'm looking at this two o'clock here, this hour on the two, pointing right to the two, it must be a two. When we're in real life, if you're seeing just one thing at a time, you're not able to see the whole picture around it, we're going to be making judgments based on what we're seeing that might not have all the information, okay? Because in this, it's not two, it's still one o'clock. It's not gonna be two o'clock for another four minutes. It's still 1.56. So we're going through this process, looking at how these symbols relate to each other and trying to determine the correct time. When we do this repeatedly, when we're looking at these times, when we're looking at these clocks, we're trying to figure out which one is an hour, which one is a minute, and we're doing this over sets of two hand clocks. We're, we're processing through and saying, okay, well, this looks like 5.30, this looks like 1.10, this looks like 8.02, this looks like 3.24, this looks like 6.37, this looks like 12.08. As we're going through that process, I'm forcing one half of my brain to work with the other, right? So if I'm looking back at this clock, the right side of our brain reads more people, emotion, situations, understands how we're feeling in the moment, understands how other people are feeling in the moment, gives us empathy for others, and the artistic brain that we see, there a, is a lot of right, who's a right, who's a left brain type of talk in schools that we see now. Um, so the right side's more reading the circles and the lines. Our left brain analyzes information, reading comprehension, problem solving, detail management, finding the main idea in, in tasks. Um, that's more reading the numbers and the spaces between them. So what we're doing is we're forcing the right and the left brain to work together to be able to figure out what time it is. And we're doing that rapidly to be able to get faster and faster in the moment. Right, the brain doesn't learn um, speed. The brain learns patterns. When it has understood a pattern, it's able to put that at a faster speed, right? Just like you see with college football teams or, or NFL teams, they're gonna walk through the day before the game, the plays that they need to go. Everyone knows where everyone else is on in that moment because you can replicate that at a faster speed later on. So what we're doing is hyper-focusing to be able to uh, understand these patterns, read them faster because real time of life moves quite a bit faster than needing everything to slow down. If we can pick up that processing speed, it's just going to help us out more. As we move through two hands, we go to three hands. Now we're processing this at a higher level. 
So three hands, I really like to uh, compare to learning how to ride a bike, right? You see your friends doing it. You see your siblings doing it. You're like, that looks easy. I can do that. You got your training wheels on. You're kind of stuttering a bit. You get your training wheels off. You're falling all over the place. You're, you're anxious. You're bleeding. Uh, but by the end of the day, you go, no, I'm getting this. You're, you're processing that because there's a lot of things happening. There's the speed, there's the pedaling, and there's the, the, uh, the pedal, the controls, the hand controls and the, the steering, right? So once you put that all together, the brain at first doesn't know how to do it. It's trying to understand and process all the information to be able to make sense and do this activity very quickly. Then you're riding a bike, just like the old saying goes right? It's just like riding a bike. We've learned this process. The brain knows how to do it. It accesses this part of the brain to be able to know how to ride a bike. It does it efficiently without thinking. Now you get your hands off the wheel. Now you're talking to your friends. Now you're riding to get ice cream, right? And as you get more and more proficient, you put less and less energy to the task. And that's how we get good at anything. We put less energy to a task and that allows our brain to be more efficient, to be able to do multiple things at the same time, to build on our knowledge in school, to allow us to do things with ease, right? And as we get more complicated within this program and move up and add additional hands and additional hands and additional hands, all while typing them down at this lower speed, right? We're processing more information. We're accessing the part of the brain that does this. We're lowering the amount of hyperconnectivity and overconnectivity in the frontal lobes to be able to stay in the best part of our brain for thinking and processing information. And we track all of this progress. We need to. We need to see how we're improving. We use this for goal setting. We use this for parent communication or student communication or participant communication, uh, depending on the type of program that you're in, to be able to track how we're progressing, how much faster we're moving, how the accuracy is staying put, to be able to reach that goal of doing these clocks without needing to overthink about it. Making a difficult task easy, because this part of the brain lights up like a, a candle on, on the scans when we see people doing clocks. Right. So we're we're targeting this area just like going to the gym, just like targeting muscle groups. 